is place them back in the right order. So we have y, p, so c3 is 1, so we get just x squared plus c4 is negative 2, so it's actually minus Two x plus c five, which is three halves, plus two thirds e to the x. So that's our actual particular solution with the um, correct coefficients in front. So we will have to do this anytime we want a particular solution. We have to go and figure out what are all the actual coefficient values. So knowing this, we'll now go on to the next example that we tried to start, but couldn't do so. So for the homogeneous solution, you're going to have your coefficients are going to stay there until you get initial conditions. So your homogeneous solution, the YC, uh, keeps its constants. It's only the particular solution that you actually fill in the constant values without initial conditions. So we're looking at derivatives uh, of q of x. So this one was chosen uh, because our original solution, we wouldn't have to recompute that one. So I chose on the left side the same problem, just change the q of x to a different function. So all our derivatives of qx so can I be lazy and just write out derivatives as x e negative 2x e negative 2x I think that's all we're going to get out of here Maybe I should take the first derivative just to be safe. So we'll get 3e negative 2x product rule will be a minus 3 times negative 2, which is 6xe negative 2x. That seems right. And then Q double prime, we won't see any new terms pop out because we basically have a repeat of our original term with a different constant multiple. So we're not going to see any new terms no matter how many more derivatives I take after this. Read my lips, no new terms. That's an old reference. <laughs> All right, so questions about no new terms? If I keep taking more derivatives? All right, so we just got those two terms. The only thing we have to worry about here, the derivatives of q of x are repeats. What is being repeated? Unfortunately, they're both being repeated. So what does this uh, algorithm say, multiply repeated term by x to the n, where n is a high enough power so that you get linear independence. So we'll multiply them by x, see if they're independent, multiply them by x to the first, x to the second, x to the third. So it looks like if I multiply them, we'll do one term at a time. It doesn't matter which one we do first. Uh, we'll start with that term first. So we're going to make this linearly independent. By x to the n for the smallest uh, integer power of n. And 
And if we multiply by just x, we will get x squared e to the negative 2x, which will be independent from our original two up here. So they had constant and then x. There was no x squared e to the negative 2x term. So there's our new independent term. And we're going to do the same thing for the second term. So we're going to do that one next. I'll do that one in green, actually. So that's, if we just go times x, that's not going to be independent. We already saw that term. We'll go x squared. That, unfortunately, is the one we just created above. So that's not going to be independent either. So that one's out. And x cubed. Finally, there's no x cubed e to the negative 2x term. So this is our independent term. So independent, independent. So now we get to write these together. So y p is, we already use c1, c2. So we're going to use c3. c3 x squared e negative 2x plus c4 x cubed e negative 2x. And whenever you find a particular solution, you need to actually figure out your constants. So what we're going to do is plug this back into the original right there at the top of the screen. So I need to take the first derivative, second derivative, plug it in, and figure out the C3 uh, and C4. So I want you to do that right now. So take two derivatives and figure out C3 and C4. And what I did on my last yp prime is I combined my constants together so my derivative would be less painful to take.
I basically have one less uh, product rule I had to do. Plus, at some point, I'm going to do uh, matching coefficients. So I need to match the uh, functions of x together. So I'm going to have to do that step anyways. It looks so innocent, the original. It's pretty much what we're about to plug in. <laughs> I don't think I can do that on this screen in one line. Finish this. I heard it too. So we can factor an e to the negative two x out of every single thing. So and that's not going to really be necessary. Every term has an e to the negative two x in it. So let's not bother writing any of that. Try to write small. 
the x's are super important, but not the e to the negative 2x part. So it'll, it's just arranged by powers of x, basically. Yeah, because I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to go to two lines anyways. Plus 4c4, oh, x squared, plus 4c4x cubed, plus 4 times that. No, that. 2c3x. I think we can do this. Almost there. C3x squared plus C4x cubed. X cubed equals 3x. So, geez, I can't even zoom out to the whole thing. Well, there's no, so there's no pattern, <laughs> so I can't really do that. So this is going to be very overdetermined. There's an x cubed squared first and zero power. And we only have two numbers we're trying to find. So let's try to be smart. I know it's difficult for me on a Friday. I see only one constant term on the left. And it's 2c3. There's no other constant term. Is that right? x, x squared, x cubed, x, 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 x. So I think that means c3 equals 0 right there. And is there any other term that's unique? x, x squared, cubed. Looks like x might be the next least busiest power. So let's use the x power and match x power. So on the right, we got 3x. Or we're just matching coefficients. So on the right side, we got a 3. And the x coefficients on the left side, we have. There's more x, though. There is 8c3. 8c3, and then, oh, that's it. Not bad. So c3s cancel. Doesn't matter much. They would have been 0 anyways. 6c4 equals 3. 3, 6, 1 half. So somewhere up here. C3x squared, well, 0 plus C4 1 half x cubed e negative 2x. All right, there we go. No problem. Some easy algebra for Friday. What do you mean? Just the minimum power, so you don't basically don't get, you get a new term that's independent, new being an ind linearly independent term. So we had a e to the negative two x and an x e to the negative two x. So the next power was x squared, right. and the next power is x cubed. And I needed two because I had two, my q of x had two. I had to have two new independent terms because I had two terms is in the derivatives of Q. If I only had one, like if, 
If my Q just started out like that, didn't have an X, well, I'd only need one new term. Okay. I don't know if that was the answer to the question you were asking. But I, I had to get two independent terms because I started out needing two independent terms. Why did you So I didn't discard the three. I didn't want to work with you as an engineer. Yeah, I see it right there, but I was just like, on the top part, did you just not write it because it wasn't needed right there? No, not that one. The one you were just looking at with the one part of the other part. One was green, the other was black. If you can make it through the classes. There, right there. The X, E to the negative 2X, and then the E to the negative 2X. Those right there. Oh, that three? Yes. That the fact that that was three made no difference in what the derivatives of the that term would look like. But it made a difference. So if that was let's say a one instead of a three, then that would be a one. In which case, one that would be a one, and our constant would be one sixth. So it would change things, but not. Um, it just in that way. So it wouldn't change what the terms would look like, but it would affect the, what the actual constants turned out to be. So it wouldn't change like the form, it would change the particular linear combination that we got at the end.